Hey, welcome back to Smashing Pillars International. My name is Samuel, and I want to thank you for taking time to watch this episode or listen to it. <laughs> I, um, yeah, we're, we're actually, it, this episode is actually part two of, um, uh, the evil eye. We started that last week and, uh, I, I didn't, didn't have enough time to get it all in one message. So I split it up and uh, we're doing part two today and, um, a lot of good information here, guys. And you may be familiar with this or if you you're hearing it for the first time a lot of good information here it'll it'll really help you educate you to um know how to speak to this uh topic if somebody asks you about it or it'll help you to recognize if you're dealing with something you'll know how to deal with it yourself you you know and, i mean there's nothing wrong with calling someone to pray for you but if you can deal with it yourself that'd be the best deal and then you can set people free around you from this so anyway it's a great message uh so i'm told and uh, um just just know this my purpose for putting these videos out is to educate and equip that's that's the reason why i put these things out is to educate you and to equip you um and so that's that's my 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 agenda is to um, first learn myself all that I can learn from the Lord and and from the great you know men and women of God that He's placed in my life, and then pass that on to others and teach them to do the same, basically. So, uh, yeah. So I just wanted you to know that. Um, anyway, it's a great message and. Uh, yeah, so let me just open in prayer and we'll get started. Father, we just thank you right now, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. And uh, thank you for this opportunity to share your word again. Lord, thank you for giving us, uh, opening up our understanding, Lord, to comprehend. Lord, that we wouldn't get into superstition and all that kind of stuff. But Lord, that we, that we would literally get to the nuts and bolts of this and we'd know how to deal with it and speak to it lord and we just thank you lord that you're you're so awesome lord that you you give us these give us these opportunities to uh like reinhard bonky would say uh plunder hell and populate heaven and so thank you for doing that lord thank you for blessing my my brothers and my sisters that are listening right now in jesus mighty name amen and amen all right let's get the message started Tonight's service is going to be titled uh, The Evil Eye Part 2. So we started on this last week and we're going to wrap it up um, today. And I'm just trying to think. Before we get started during worship, did anyone see or hear, did the Lord show you something that you felt like he wanted you to release to, to the group here tonight? If he did, come on up here and share that. This is, this is the time where you flow in your gifts. And you have gifts. Because if you don't, I'm doing something wrong. And if you don't have anything, that's good too. That's okay. Just give you a minute to check. Um, I did want to share something if uh, no one has anything. Okay. So, <clears throat> be encouraged is what I was hearing the Lord say during worship. And um, let me see. Uh, here's a, here's a, a question that the Lord told me to, to, to ask everyone here. Okay. Um, what has the Lord been showing you? Okay. That's something for you to answer on your own time, but what has the Lord been showing you? What has the Lord been telling you about things to come, uh, this year, this next five years, what is he showing you for you, your family? I mean, is he saying anything to you? And not, if you're thinking, well, this prophet said this and that prophet said that, the Lord says no. What are you hearing from him? Okay. He wants, he wants to know. And, and if you're not thinking that way, because, you know, we, we're, we're so used to in the church, we're so used to going to this meeting, that conference, all that, to hear what the prophets and all the pastors and all that they have to say. And sometimes people get stuck there. They don't, they don't go beyond that, you know. 
But if you ask the Lord, he'll tell you and you'll, you'll know exactly what you should be doing. There will be opposition. If you're doing the will of the Lord, it comes with opposition. So that doesn't mean that you're, you've done anything wrong. It just means you're doing the right thing. And, um, but what has the Lord, what is the Lord showing you about things to come? Another thing is, um, yeah, what is God saying to you? Okay. So that's something that uh, I, I would start putting before the Lord saying, okay, what, is, Lord, what are you saying about this month, this year? You know, I want to, I want to know for myself. And then what God will do is he'll confirm it through other people, what he's been telling you, okay? Um, the other thing, too, is, you know that last song, I want to know who you really are? You know what he's just saying? That? Wasn't that awesome? Did that minister to you? Okay, because right in the last part of that, I saw the Spirit of the Lord, like the Lord himself was singing that to everyone here. I want to know who you really are. I want to know who you really are. So what is the Lord saying to you? And he wants to know who you really are. Basically, I want to show you who you are, you know, and, um, and be encouraged. Uh, like I started to say that be encouraged because I know that people are going through things and, uh, the Lord was telling me during worship to encourage you guys, um, and to let you know that you've, you are a part of the, Hebrews 11 group, the hall of faith. Okay. But if you read about them, you'll see that they went through some stuff. They went through things, but they never lost sight of the goal. And that was God, right? That was God. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So, but I rejoice in the Lord. This is uh, Philippians 4, verse 10. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly now that at your last care for me has flourished. Let's see. Is that the right thing? Yes. Through you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. And this is not an offering message, okay? I know that this is used for offering, but that's not what this is, okay? This is, it is an offering message. It's to offer yourself to the Lord. Okay, let me just say it that way. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. Okay, are you content right now? In whatever state that you're in, are you content right now? I'm sorry. Yeah, I, th I think we all do if God's talking to us about it, you know. 12, verse 12. I know how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere. In all things, I've learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Okay. So we, we, have to, we have to get to a place where we can say, I'm content where I'm at. You know, both my cars aren't running or whatever. I mean, you, you guys know some of the stuff that I've, I've been dealing with, but or my dog is sick or. I mean, these are like really major problems, you know. <laughs> I'm trying to find an example for you. But the thing is, is you have to learn how to how to be content in all things. Mom and I were having a conversation just the other day and she she made a comment about we were leaving the store because we had a basket of I think it was a total of what, six bags or seven bags. And it was a hundred and something dollars. <laughs> it was like. And, you know, I just kind of looked and I smiled and she said, man, the groceries are like double now, more than double and all those kind of things. And I said, but you know what, though, mom, we haven't missed any meals. Our refrigerator is not slim. I mean, it's full. The deep freeze is full. You're always giving stuff away. It's it's amazing how, you know, things, uh, prices of everything, the inflation's gone up and all that. And God's like, I got it. Don't stress over all that stuff, you know? And so that's, that's what I feel like the Lord is saying to encourage you, no matter what it is, if it's finances, if it's relationship, if it's your family, whatever it is, be encouraged, learn to be content. And, and so that the Lord is free to move and you can hear clearly what he's saying to do or pray or not pray or not say, um, but you play a part in everything that's going on around you. Um, 
The other thing, too, that I felt like the Lord was saying, let me pull this up real quick, is don't give up on whatever you've been praying for. Some, some of us have been praying for a long time. And sometimes there's the temptation to just throw in the, the rag and say, God, it's whatever it is. I, I'm okay. I'm, con I'm okay with you. If you don't want to do this or if this is never going to happen, at least I got you, Jesus. And the, the thing is, is the Lord said to me to, to tell you guys during worship, don't stop praying. Some of you are so close to breakthrough. And that's, that's where the enemy is coming so hard against you, telling you, stop, stop. You just give it up. Let, let it go and, and go do something else for the Lord or whatever. But he gave me a, a passage to give you. This is uh, in Revelation chapter 16, verse 10. All right, so then the fifth angel poured out his bow on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom became full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues because of the pain. And this is what I felt like the Lord was saying. That bowl that you've been filling with your prayers is about to tip over. And the throne of that thing that's been coming against you or your family or your health or whatever it is, that throne's about to be plunged into darkness. Okay? So don't stop praying. Keep praying. In fact, prayer has to be like, a lifestyle it has to be who you are. It really does. And praying in tongues more than ever is so important right now. Got to pray in tongues, pray in tongues, pray in tongues all the time. You have to train yourself to do that, you know? And um, you'll find that it, the more and more you do that, the more and more you have answers to things just like that. The answers come to you. Okay. You know where it says in a, and then we'll get started. Let's see. Uh, Corinthians, I think it's 1 Corinthians. Let's see. Chapter 2. No, 1 Corinthians. Yes. Yay, that was it. All right. So, chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse... Nine, but as it is written, eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. The next verse, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So you hear that, that saying God works in mysterious ways? Not really. He reveals thing, everything to us by the Spirit. If he doesn't reveal something to you, it's not time for you to know because for different reasons. It could be because you might say, okay, I got this, God. I'll go fix it for you. Get ahead of God or something. But he reveals everything to us by the Spirit. because you, In fact, you know the passage in Isaiah that says, uh, my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways? Well, that's to the unsaved person. But you're saved. You're born again. His thoughts are your thoughts. His ways are your ways. That makes sense. Okay, he's got it. He's got it. Amen. All right. Why don't you come on up here? Gabriel. Well, you were talking about Revelation. I saw two angels fly in and, and they said, we are your joy angels. We're going to give you more joy than you've ever seen. So just keep it. He said, keep what you're doing. Keep it up because it's going somewhere and the joy is coming. Amen. Amen. Well, so, and what is the joy of the Lord? So, so that means we need strength for the days ahead. Supernatural strength. I want to say strength. <laughs> All right. Everyone have a copy of the notes? Okay, Pastor Hit. Well, you know, you know Pastor Bill Hit. He's supposed to be here, and he, he may, if he shows up, he's he's got a little bit he wants to add on to this. And I told him that that was fine. Come on. All right. So last week seems like a long time ago, but it was just last week. Uh, we talked about the evil eye. There's so much going on. We did what Hanukkah just. And then I was watching some of the lessons on, on OFCC. 
How many of you were here for uh, Tom Long's lesson on the big puzzle? Was it the big puzzle? Is that what it's called? Nah, that was an awesome message. It's an awesome message. I mean, it's, it's exactly what needs to be released right now into the body. First here and then there. <laughs> you know, it's, it's for you personally first. And, um, but it's a great message. You, you guys, God is doing so much. Stay tapped in. Okay. Anyway, so we were talking about the evil eye. Last week we talked, I just kind of went and pulled some opinions from different Bible scholars the different things that were being said about this. Then we looked into uh, what scripture actually says. And what we found out is that there's uh, two sides to this. You know, some say that the evil eye is just an idiom that's used in the, in, in the scriptures and others say that there's a magical power behind it. Okay? And um, I want to say both. Okay. Both. But let's, let's get started here. So Deuteronomy 18, 9, through 14. When you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Okay. So we're about to enter into Rosh Hashanah. We're about to enter into a new land. Okay. So just pointing that out. So when you come into the land of which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. There should not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft or a soothsayer, one who interprets omens or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells or a medium or a spirit, spiritist, or one who conjures up the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out from before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. For these nations which you will dispossess, listen to soothsayers and diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God is not appointed such for you. So God has, he's very clear, right? Stay away from all the occult stuff. I mean, he, he covered it all. You know, so. Um, do whatever the Lord is telling you to do. If you, if you still follow horoscopes and things like that, and the Lord is, is, is moving on your heart to, hey, you need to lay that down already, lay it down, you know, lay it down because it's an abomination to the Lord, okay? There's, yes, sir. Before, yeah. Yeah, it's the first commandment. I have no gods before. And, you know, so... Um, <clears throat> This is, this is, we're entering into a new year, so this is the time to, you know, close some doors so that God can open some new doors, so all those kind of things, right? But if, if that's something that, anything, horoscope, anything that is occult, games, there's a lot of that in games and things like that. Uh, I'll share a quick story. When I moved to Florida to go to Bible school, I used to always open up the fortune cookies. And, I mean, I don't look at them as, like, horoscopes or anything like that but sometimes the lord will tell you to do something because it's not really about the thing it's about are you going to hear and obey me are you going to do what i'm telling you to do and so he started he said to me one day he said i don't want you to open those up anymore and i said oh man <laughs> <laughs> and um the next time i went to one of those restaurants and this is in Florida. They brought my bill and they brought me those. He said, do not open that. Don't open it. And I was like, dang. And I start. I didn't realize anything at first, but I was like, let's eat the cookie. That's it. I'm going to just eat the cookie, right? And I read the thing. Next time I go to the restaurant and he says, do not open that fortune cookie. And if you don't think you can handle it, don't even go in there to eat. So I went in. And I opened the fortune cookie. <laughs> but here's, here's the thing. There was nothing in it. Anybody ever get an empty one? You got an empty one? Okay. You walk on a high level. No. <laughs> um, there was nothing in it. And I laughed so hard, you know. Next time I go to the restaurant, again, don't grab that cookie. And I did. This time I couldn't open the, the thing. It was like, and when I 
finally opened it, it popped out and it bounced on the table next to me. It bounced off that table and it hit the guy on the table on the other side over there. And he just kind of looked around and said, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. After that, I didn't touch him anymore. Okay. Because I didn't think there was anything wrong with it. I mean, I wasn't looking at these, whatever they are in there saying, this is what the spirit of the Lord is saying over me right now. You know, I wasn't looking at them that way. But the Lord was showing me that thing has a hold on you. There's a spirit behind it and you don't even realize it. There is a spirit behind it. And so, you know, I prayed and, and, and that was it. You know, I think one time I came to Houston and I started doing that again. And I just felt like the Lord didn't say anything about it anymore. I started one time mom and I were in Conroe. We were coming into Houston. We stopped at a Chinese restaurant. Remember that? She opened her fortune cookie and it had 19 fortunes in there. Was it 19? Something like that. They were all, they weren't, they weren't separated or cut. It was just one long strip and it was rolled up real tight and put in there. And I said, that has to be a good sign. I don't know what it means, but <laughs> so, um, you have to, you have to separate yourself from all these things, all of it. Okay. Mom and I, you know, we, we, we do a lot of spiritual cleaning at the house, you know, but all right. So it's very obvious that God takes this stuff very seriously, right? All right. So Exodus 23, verse 22 through 30. And this, this next passage here, it's kind of like the one we just read out of Deuteronomy, but it, it gives a little bit of, of a different perspective. But if you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, very first thing, if you obey his voice and do all that, that he says to you to do, then he will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. For my angel will go before you and bring you into the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Not you. God's going to cut them off. Okay? You shall not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do according to their works, but you shall utterly overthrow them and completely break down their sacred pillars. So you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water. Now, remember here, the, the, the previous passage in Deuteronomy, he's driving out these people because they listen to sorcerers and diviners and all. He's driving them out. Now he's going to bring them in, and he's saying, I'm going to cleanse the land for you, basically. Right? Um, <clears throat> so, and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days, and I will send my fear before you. I will cause confusion among all the people to whom you come, and I will make all your enemies turn their backs to you. That's pretty powerful. Everything, everything you read there, God, God says, I will, I will, I will, I will. Okay. And I will send hornets before you, which shall drive out the Hivite and the Canaanite and the, the Hittite uh, from before you. I will drive them out from before you in one year. I will not drive them out uh, before you in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beast of the field become too numerous for you. Little by little, I will drive them out from before you until you have increased and you inherit the land. So he's going to do it little by little, year by year. And so like some of us here, I've had conversations with some here. God's been telling us to do something and, and has shown us everything, right? It's, uh, the children's stuff and books and all that kind of stuff. And, and it's almost like you're almost seeing like the end of the thing. But to get started, it's like, wow. Well, he says here, I will not drive them out from before you in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beasts of the field become too numerous. Little by little, I will drive them out from before you until you've increased and you inherit the land. Right? So we step out and we do whatever God's told us to do. We start doing that. And before you know it, he keeps adding to it and adding to it and adding to it. Um, and before you know it, you, you find out that God's done a great thing, you know, but it, you have to take, you have to start somewhere somehow. All right. So in last week's meeting, we learned that what the evil eye is, what scholars have to say, what the Bible says about it. We learned that the evil eye in the Bible and many other uh, cultures, it's an idiom, really. Uh, the evil eye for greed and stinginess 
on one side and magical occult practices and powers on the other. So you got two camps on this, okay? Um, we learned that the biblical notion is probably somewhere in between those two things. Remember what I said about that last, last week? I said, it's a gray area. And God is ready to bring clarification to these. This is a gray, gray area, okay? Uh, there are passages in the Bible that seem to imply there is some sort of power associated with the gaze or a look from one person to another in order to transfer something spiritual that can be, that can be good or bad. Okay? Uh, some examples from the Bible. And these are some scriptures we went over last week, but I just wanted to kind of touch on them again. Uh, Numbers 23, 13. And Balak said to Balaam, please come with me to another place from which you may see them. You shall see only a fraction of them and shall not see them all. Then curse them for me from there. So there's something to do with the gaze, right? Uh, God's watchful gaze could bring aid to the one who sought it or harm to the one who had the misfortune of falling under it. Okay. There's something to do with looking upon or being seen. Um, and it can be good or bad. Uh, Job 40, verse 11 and 12. Pour out the overflowings of your anger and look on everyone who is proud and abase him. Look on everyone who is proud and bring him low and tread down the wicked where they stand. Uh, so Job specifically asked God to look away. In Job 7, 19, he's, it says, look away from him so that he can have a brief respite uh, from his troubles. The implication being that God's sight itself can bring harm. Okay. Bless you. Sight also has the power to affect the perceiver. Sight could also apparently transfer physical properties between entities. Okay. Now we're getting into the metaphysical things here. Um, 2 Kings 2, 19 through 15. This is just a, a, um, a summary of that, those passages. But it says, Elisha absorbs the prophetic power of Elijah. Elisha absorbs the prophetic power of Elisha by seeing him ascend. So you see, there's, there's something there to that. If you see it, if you see me when, when the Lord comes to take me, you will have what you want. Okay. Um, and then in Numbers 21, verse 9, a person who is bitten by a snake could be healed by looking at the serpent staff of Moses. What you're gazing upon. Okay. What about the evil eye from the magical occult and satanic side? Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. So y have you, anyone ever seen that image there? It's called a what? A Hamza? Ham Hamza, something like that? Yeah. Yeah, evil eye. It's, this is actually supposed to protect you from the evil eye. It's all over Israel, yeah. It's all over Israel. And, uh, but really what it does is it just opens the door to the demonic. You know? So, if you have anything like that, get rid of it. Uh, witchcraft through the evil eye is very real. Witches do their craft with intense intent, focusing on the very thing or person they desire to hurt. That's why they want a picture. They'll use pictures in their spells. Um, material objects, personal material objects, hair, whatever they can get their hands on, they use that. And um, so remember, I I've told you all the story several times already over the past few years when I uh, went to grocery store one time there in my neighborhood. And I came out with a headache three days in a row, go to the store, come out with a headache. And the third day I said, hey, I have a headache. <laughs> Why am I getting a headache every time I come into the store? And the Lord said, there's a, there's a witch in there, a warlock, and he's, he projects curses on you. Okay. And I said, what do I do? I'll start going to Kroger's, right? <laughs> I said, what do I do? And he said, um, when you come in, when you come to the store, before you go in, find that spirit of witchcraft, forbid it to operate against you, go in and do your business. When you leave, break off anything that may have uh, tried to attach itself to you. So I started doing that headaches, but I had a question. Who is the warlock? I know that God said there's an employee in there and he's a warlock, right? And, but he told me it's none of your business, it's none of your business. I, he said, you know, all you need to know is that someone's doing witchcraft and that, that's, that's, 
that's your point of contact right there is where you break that. Take authority over it and break it. It doesn't matter who it is. But I wouldn't give it up. Every time I go there, I'd look, is that him? Is that him? Is that him? Is that him? You know? And I finally picked him out. <laughs> I said, is this the guy? And the Lord said, yeah, he's mad because he's trying to project curses on you. And they're just falling to the ground like rocks. It's not, it's not having any effect, and he's mad. I, I'm saying all that to say this. I was, I was asking the Lord for some examples of uh, evil eye, and he, he gave me that example. I never looked at it as evil eye, but he said he saw you when you walked in the store. He saw you in the spirit. He saw the light in you, and every time you'd come in, he would start projecting things on you. He would focus on you and project things. That's an evil eye. That's an evil eye. You know, and so we're friends today, but sorta, we're just acquaintances. He's not saved, but he's on the way. Yeah, he is on the way. So don't, don't let something like that. I mean, unless the Lord tells you, Hey, just stay away from that person. Don't back away from that kind of stuff. You have the light. You have what they need. I walked in there one morning. He was, just, he was, it was probably like six in the morning. And he was there. I said, wow, you're here already? He's like, yeah. And I said, man, you know what? The Lord woke me up at 4 a.m. this morning. And, and he said, really? And I said, yeah. And, and I sat up and I knew it was the Lord because I was wide awake. And I said, okay, why am I awake? And he said, I want you to pray for this guy. And he said, what? I said, yeah, the Lord woke me up to pray for you. Really? I said, yeah. And then he kind of like shook it off. He's like, oh, well. I was up at 4 a.m. too, meditating. And I said, okay. Well, just letting you know. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, all right. So, that's, a, that's, a, that's an example, a personal example of somebody projecting something onto you through, through their vision, right? Um, <clears throat> Luke 11. Uh, yeah, Luke 11, 34 through 36. The lamp of the body is the eye. Okay? Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body is also full of light. But when your eye is bad, your body is also full of darkness. Therefore, take heed that the light which is in you is not darkness. If then your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, the whole body will be full of light. As when the bright shining of a lamp gives you light. So, um, you know, you hear all the time, right? The, the, your eyes are the window of your soul. It's true. It is true. Things come in, they go out, all that kind of stuff. I want to show you something about darkness, though. That word darkness there in the Greek, it means persons in whom darkness becomes visible and holds sway. Control. That's witchcraft. That's witchcraft. The root word means shadow or an image cast by an object and representing the form of that object. Like soul traveling or I don't know, but it could fit a lot of things. But that's what that word darkness right there means. Make sure that your darkness is not something that becomes visible and you begin to hold sway over others. And you begin to manipulate people. The evil eye is real. It's a real form of witchcraft. It's probably not called that as much today, but still very much alive and being projected by witches onto believers and unbelievers. Okay. And, um, has anyone here ever dealt with some like evil eye? Yeah. Come on up here and, and just share a little bit about it. This is Holly guys. And how, and how did you deal with it? Um, well, I went to a conference at a church, um, and I was just in the parking lot, and I got out of my car, and I happened to look, and there was a woman, that I think I had seen her there before, because I had gone there. Hold the mic up closer. And she, um, she had a big smile on her face, but she had, I mean, I could see from a distance, she had like black glasses, red lipstick, and she had, you know, like a hood or something. When I looked, and the smile, and it. I mean, it just hit me. I knew. I knew. I knew it was, it was like a witchcraft thing. 
And then I, <laughs> I'm like, so I'm going in, and I'm like, and then I felt bad. I didn't want to think, oh, yeah, I don't want to be itchy. You know what I mean? That thought goes through your mind. You don't want to do that. And I went to see this person who everybody was going to see, and she she did go to that church because I had been to that church a few times. So I was sitting in the row, you know, like, and then over there were chairs like that. And she was sitting, like, right there and just with that smile, like mm -hmm. this smile mm -hmm. on her face. And I'm like, the whole night was, like, tainted. I mean, the whole spirit of darkness. And even the guest speaker who was, um, we all know, but he's mm -hmm. usually from the north side, he goes, you know, it's different in here. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, Maybe but I knew it. Um, so, and it, yeah, I experienced that at this church. So, yes, I've had that more than But that was, and it's a smile. That's like, hey. It, it really and I had to break it off. I had to go home and break it off. So. There you go. Yeah. yeah. I did. I'm, okay. and, and I don't fear it, but it's just you can tell. Mm-hmm. Um, break it off. I've had, you know, um, other people, same church, actually, with, um, somebody I hadn't seen in a while that I knew at another church, and she, our relationship kind of went away, went wrong, and so she, I hadn't seen her in years, and she had come up to me, and she wanted to apologize, and she's like, will you accept my forgiveness? Hmm. Will you? That's cool. And she yeah. Held my uh -oh. hand, uh -oh. and immediately I felt. Actually, mm -hmm. I think I called you. It was years ago. Yeah. Ah, and I literally felt all this anxiety because I don't get anxiety normally, and it was just running up and down. And so, um, you know, you taught me a lot of that too. There was a transference of that. Yeah. Totally. I've, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've experienced some of that. So you, you know, I can't break it off. I'm not afraid of it. It's like, uh oh, you know, get off. And sometimes it's more than once, but. Um, yes, and it can come just from a, a smile glance. So, yeah. mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, you know, um, that's key. You know, even if you've never dealt with it before or dealt with any, not just evil eye, whatever it is, but you feel something's off, it doesn't matter if you, if you don't know what, just speak. Begin to speak the word of the Lord. Begin to take authority over it. Get out of here. Mom, every once in a while, will tell me, you know, last night when you went to the meeting or where you were wherever, wherever I, you know, I go to speak, and she, if she happens to stay home, she'll say, I was going to go to bed, but I, all of a sudden, I felt this really weird feeling all of a sudden. And um, be, in the beginning, when something like that would happen, she'd say, and I just, you know, sat up, I didn't, got on the computer or whatever, you know. Uh, today, though, if something like that happens, I'd <laughs> She'll say, I'll say, get out of here right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> and it goes away. I'll go to sleep. Yeah. You know, it, it you know, what the Lord, the Lord has me teach on these things sometimes because he wants you to know the stuff that's being done out there. But he is already giving you the authority over all of it. You know, and a lot of times witchcraft, you can be under a witchcraft attack and not know it because it manifests in your emotions. It's your emotions, it's things going on around the house, and you'll think like, oh, this is just normally broke, i got to get another one or whatever, but it's some one thing right after another, over and over and over again. you probably got something supernatural going on there. Okay. Um, so, if you have any of these evil eyes, get rid of them. Rabbit's foots, eight balls, what else? What else? Come on. Sage, you can't use sage to cleanse your house and cleanse people. That doesn't work. The Holy Spirit does that. We're washing by the water of the word, right? Yeah, no, you got to, it, it's either God, it's, it's got to be all God or not. You know? Hmm? Dream catchers, there's another one there. If people say that, that's a good thing. I'm like, mm, I don't know. Um, yeah, dream catchers are not good. Altars, even if it's to God, altars with the little saints and all that, it's not good. Um, you know why God God says in, in um, if you're familiar with like the tabernacle 
and the curtains and all that kind of stuff. If you if you look online at some some images of that, you'll see like there's angels and then there's the seraphim in there and uh, there might be some animals, whatever. But you won't see any images of any men in there or women, okay? Except for the priests and the Levites that are working. But the reason why is because you're the image of God. So whenever, you know, whenever the priest or, you know, the Levites are doing their duties and all that, they're, imi they're the image of God, you know. That's why he doesn't want us to make any images or statues or anything like that of anything, you know, in the heavens, on the earth, or beneath the earth, and, and look to those things because all you got to do is look to your left and to your right and you'll see the image of God here with you. No, you should give them all to me. No, <laughs> I need all the angels I can get. No, no, um, you no. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's it's when somebody becomes like obsessed. Everything is angel, 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 angel. You got something going on there, you know. But no, I don't think there's anything. Huh? You know, if it's like I said, I mean, I've been to some houses where everything is angel, 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 angel. Since we're talking about angels. Everything, everywhere, in every room you go, and they're all over the place. And I'm like, it doesn't even look right anymore. It's off now, you know. That that's not good. Um, and then I would also just pray over everything that you know, because there are some that they're they're angels, but they're not. It's not a good thing, you know. So I went to uh, Mardell's bookstore when they used to be open over there on the north side of where I live, and I walked into the. You know how they have like furniture and figurines and all that kind of stuff. And there was one of, uh, was it Michael and Satan? And he's got him like under his feet and chains and he's got a sword like that and his big old wings. I was like, yeah, you're going to get it, dude. And I liked it so much that I bought it. It's a little thing like this, right? Yeah. And I took it home and uh, maybe three or four weeks went by and I don't know, I started feeling a little bit off, you know, like something was off. So I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And then uh, the Lord said, you, you got to get rid of that statue. And I said, really? He said, that's, that's, he, there's a whole lot behind that piece of art, if you want to call it that. But it's not good. Not good. And he said, you got to get rid of it. And I said, done. Absolutely. And, uh, and so I, I got rid of it. And the same day that I put it out in the trash, I got a phone call from someone and she said, Hey, uh, can I come by your house? I have something for you. And this person was real questionable to begin with. And I said, uh, uh, yeah, sure. Come on by. She brought me the same statue, but it was from the floor to here. Enormous. And I said, Oh, <laughs> I can't receive this. This is so beautiful. You should keep it. They gave it to you. She said, no, when they gave it to me, the Lord specifically said, bring it to Samuel and give it to him. And I said, all right. And I said, but I can tell you right now, I'm not going to keep it probably. She said, whatever you want to do with it, you know? And so she left and I put it out in the trash. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, like to bow down and worship it, I think it says something like that. You're not doing that, but there's still something behind it that's not good. You know, so I would, I would, you know. Fairies are not good at all. No. Fairies are like the. <laughs> sure you don't. We're coming to your house. Yeah. Yeah, probably was. So, okay. So those that are watching my live stream, um, we have somebody here in the congregation that's asking if fairies or angels are bad. And that's, that's the response that you're hearing, have, hearing me give to them is it's about that. So fairies are not good. All fairies. <laughs> <laughs> those are not good. Yeah, they're not good. All that fantasy stuff. Yeah.
All that fantasy stuff is not good. So, see, this is good that we're talking about this because you may have gotten rid of them, but somebody else here may still have them and say, oh, man, I got to go home and get rid of them, you know. But you, you got to get rid of all that stuff. Travelocity Gnome is no good. It's at Howard's house. All right. So, um, where was I? Let's see. All over the place. Okay, so... <clears throat> Um, so I'm just want to, I, th I think we should just, I got these two prayers here. They're just, uh, a, an, a sample or an example of how you can pray, you know, um, just to give you an idea of things that need to be covered. If you're praying for a, a season, a, a particular situation like this. Uh, but what I think we should do is just go ahead and, and read it out together and just pray it out together. All right. All ready for that? All right. So we're going to do the first one, breaking witchcraft power over you. Those of you that are watching by live stream, um, you just be in agreement. Okay. And all right. So let's just start. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bind and break all witchcraft, curses, spells, and all powers associated with it. Through the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, we destroy the works of every witch, Warlock, wizard, sorcerer, and all other powers of darkness. Through the blood of Jesus, we break all their powers, including the influences of witchcraft, evil eye, evil powers, spells, hexes, vexes, voodoo, hoodoo, roots, potions, or any such things off of me, my family, and all my future generations. Christ has redeemed me and my family from the curse of the law that I may receive the blessings of Abraham through the blood of Jesus Christ. We also bind up and destroy all their spirit guides, helps and shields of these workers of evil and leave them without any strength stripped of their evil powers and influence in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. All right. Okay. The next one is to pray for those involved in witchcraft. They may be doing something against you or they're just involved in witchcraft, but this is to pray for them because we're not, the reason why I, I included this is because we're not supposed to uh, fight evil with evil, right? Return evil. We're supposed to bless. We're not supposed to curse. We're supposed to bless those that are cursing us. Okay. If you look up that word curse, it literally means witchcraft. Okay. So, and don't return to cinder. Okay. No returning to cinder. Because when you do that, you, you leave the door open for the enemy to return to you as well. You're opening that door. To, it's witchcraft, really. You're just doing witchcraft back. So what you can do is pray for those that are cursing you. Or if you feel like somebody's doing witchcraft, Lord, I just lift them up to you. We'll pray this prayer right now. But don't return to cinder because you give the enemy legal right to continue to come against you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know there's some groups out there. I've been to some intercession groups where... They do that. Um, and at first I was like, yeah, come on, return to Cinder, you know. But then over time, I started noticing some groups that I went to, the ones that didn't do that and the ones that did. The ones that did that, they, those intercessors seem to be going through things a lot, a lot of stuff versus the other. And I, I think I was talking to Chip Matthews about this one day. And he said, I said, I just noticed this. He goes, well, that's because they're, they're giving the enemy legal right to attack. That's why the ones who don't do that, they seem to be doing a lot better than the others. So, you got to be careful with that. If you don't know what to pray, just say, God, will you go visit whoever's doing this? Go visit whoever's doing this. Teach them not to do this anymore. Yeah. All right, so prayer for those involved in witchcraft. You ready? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I come against the prince ruling spirit and all spirit guides. I come through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus, and I paralyze you and silence you, forbidding you from influencing or strengthening them, the witches or warlocks, in the name of Jesus. Right now, the spirit of hate, bitterness, and murder, spirits of wizardry, 
sorcery, and all your co-spirits, your works, your powers, your influences are destroyed in the name of Jesus. I paralyze you all right now. You will not be able to use this soul any longer against the church or a particular person in the name of Jesus. I come against the spirit of blindness, binding the spirits of bondage and heaviness, fear and hate. I pray, Lord, that you will open their eyes so that they can see the glory of Jesus. Open their hearts so that they can hear your voice and break the yokes in their lives and give them liberty in their souls that they may be free to repent. Show them every evil work and every evil deed they're guilty of. And Lord Jesus, convict their hearts unto repentance. Bring these souls out of darkness. Save these souls so that you may have the glory. Satan, I silence you in the name of Jesus. Binding all your influence, interference. You will not interfere with these souls. They will have their own free will choice so as to make up their, mind, their own minds if they want to repent. Also, Lord, I pray that you will release warring angels to wage war against these demonic activities and will send ministering spirits to minister to their souls in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. Um, so that's how you do it. The, if you if you take time later and read that prayer, it's nothing but authority. It's all authority. I mean, just listen to just just read that and you'll see that whoever typed this is very confident in the authority that they have in Christ Jesus. And that's what it's all about. We have to understand that. The church, most of the time you want the power, but power is accessed through authority. And so get the authority. You got the power. Amen. Um, okay. Well, you got a question? Sure. Okay. You want to come up here? Come on, Linda Atkins. Come on down. The people online can. Hey there. Yep. Hi, sweetie. Mm -hmm. uh, um, many years ago, I had, I was having difficulty sleeping. And I mean, night after night after night, I wasn't sleeping. And so finally, the Lord says, well, there's something in your house. You need to cleanse it. And I'm like, I've cleansed my house. I know there's nothing in it. It's clean. And he said, look under your bed. Well, under my bed at that time, I had uh, some storage box. And I had some magazines and books and newspaper articles. And... That I wanted to read or save or whatever. Well, I have American Indian in my background, and there was happened to be a little magazine with stories about American Indian. And it was like, I don't know. So I go through page by page by page, and I'm like, there's nothing in here, nothing in here. The very last page, there was a, a little ad. It wasn't even an inch square of I don't know what it was. It was an ad for some kind of send-off or something. But it had this little picture of a little tiny demon. Mm. And I'm like, what in the world? So, of course, I got it out. And I slept great. And then after that, I'm kind of picky. <laughs> I don't want certain books. I mean, even Christian books. I just want to be careful everything's clean so I can everything you know away from my bed mm -hmm. and i had some um teaching one time about masons mm -hmm. a paper of prayers mm -hmm. with the masonic emblems and um i cut all those off and then i bought my grandchildren uh a bible story book mm -hmm. when they were real little and it had pictures of oh this is what the, these people worshiped and it had a picture of some little God of Philistines or whoever. I cut them all out of my children, my grandson's Bible story book. So when we're reading their Bible stories, like, why? <laughs> what was here? Why, Gigi, is there a hole here? <laughs> and I said, well, it was a picture of a demon. I don't want that picture in my house. So 
it just goes to show, mm -hmm. and that was preventing me. You know. Wow. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. You never know. It could be something so small. Um, all right. So let's... Um, Heart's clear. Anybody got something? Anyone else? Okay. Come on up. Yeah, come on up. There you go. Okay, so it's not just world stuff too. I I had ordered an amplified classic Bible off of eBay. And I got it home and I've been reading it. And I started, I mean, weird things going on in my house like at night. And I actually heard scratching. I don't have any animals. I actually heard scratching inside my bed like animal dogs scratching itself. <clears throat> and I thought, I kind of live out in the woods, you know, all around me. I thought, what's outside? Kind of out of it. Sleep. So anyway, a few nights wow. later, I heard the same thing, but it's at the end of my bed instead of being on the other side of the bed. And so anyway, I said, okay, God, what's going on? Where's the open door? And I would started feeling bad, too. I started getting a cough. I just have, was having a hard time breathing. And <clears throat> anyway, um, he brought up that Bible because I had, had been about, I guess I had for a month or so. And I got that Bible. I played the blood of Jesus over it and, and you know, kind of put it to the side. Ended up giving the Bible away because I just didn't have peace about having it anymore. But just to say, it's not just things of the world. When I ordered that off of eBay, the Lord had showed me when I was praying about it. He showed me mm -hmm. two sorcerers had prayed over that Bible. So there was mm -hmm. curses on it. Yep. So, anyway. Yep. That's what they do. Yeah. I, I share the story with you of my friend Rodrigo who was being attacked every night by a sexually whatever, molested by a spirit since he was eight years old. He was 30-something years old already. And I said, that shouldn't be happening. And he goes, yeah, but I know how to do spiritual warfare now. When it comes, I just, I do war with it until it leaves, you know. And I said, yeah, but you should be sleeping, you know. And uh, so you have something in your house, you know. And he goes, no, everything is God. And I said, no, you have something. It's got to be something in your room. He's like, no, everything I have is about God. I'm like, let's ask the Lord to show you, okay. And we just said, Lord, thank you for showing him, you know. And that was it. We continued. Well, he called me a few days later and said, hey, let's meet at Starbucks for some coffee. I have a surprise for you. And I said, oh, okay, sure. We get there and he's like, hey, you know, I know I told you I had a surprise for you. He's from Mexico. So his English, you know, it's kind of a little bit off sometimes. And he said, I know I told you I had a surprise for you, but I think that means that my, I don't want you to think I'm giving you something to keep. And I said, okay. He goes, I just want to give something to you. I want to share something with you. And when you're done, keep it as long as you want. Just give it back to me. And I said, all right, what is it? And he pulls out of his backpack this big Bible. Okay, it's a big old giant Bible. You've seen those before, right? This one had beautiful, beautiful leather interior. I mean, uh, cover on it. And it was, I mean, it had all these designs. I mean, it was beautiful, beautiful. And he says, this Bible is over 100 years old. And I said, really? He said, yes. He said, and I know how much you like to read the word. So I wanted to share it with you. And then on one condition, though. And I said, yeah, what's that? He said, you, you share with me whatever God shows you. And I said, yeah, sure. And so he hands it over to me like that. And when I put my hands on it, I saw, he's kind of a little hairy, kind of hairy. I saw all his hairs go bloop on his arms, both his arms. And he goes, bro, do you see that? You see that? And I said, yeah, I see that. And he said, it's yours. You can have it. <laughs> and I said, I thought, I thought, no, it's yours. I mean, he said, I said, I thought you said that whoever gave it to you told you not to ever leave it or give it away or anything he said no no i know that's that was the lord telling me to give it to you it's yours now and i said i said okay with the intention i said okay but i intended to give it back to him at a later time so i took it home put it in my prayer room went to bed woke up like a couple hours later literally like if somebody was sitting on me straddling me with their like their knees holding me down like this just wailing on my face i hate you i hate you i hate you i hate you Oh, it was crazy. Never experienced anything like that. And I finally broke out of it and I sat up and there was such a darkness in the room. I mean, it was 
dark. And I said, what the heck? And the Lord said, it's the Bible. And I said, yeah, I know. I, I'm, I'm going to go get rid of it. And he said, get it out of the house right now. So I put it out of the house. Usually whenever I've experienced something like something similar, whatever, and it's an object, when I put it out in the garage, it's gone. Okay. That didn't work with this. Whatever this was, it was different. I went downstairs. I put the Bible out in the garage. I came back upstairs. and It was still there like waiting for me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I never saw it, but my face was all welled up. You know, it was swollen from not real, real swollen, but it was swollen from the, the bashes. Anyway, so uh, I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and it wouldn't go away. It would lift a little. And then as soon as I was going to lay back down, it'd come back again. I prayed until the sun came up. And then it was trash day too. So that put that sucker in the trash, gone. It's in the landfill somewhere. And two weeks went by and this guy, Rodrigo calls me and he says, Hey man, how's it going, bro? I said, great. I said, Oh, Hey, I got a question for you. How things been going? You know, how you been sleeping? He said, well, you know, funny thing is, is I've been sleeping great. And I said, I mean, did, have you had that thing come like to your house? And he goes, no, no, it has stopped coming. In fact, it came only the night that I, remember we met for coffee? And I said, yeah, I remember. He said, that night it came to my house. But it was different though. He said, usually it comes straight into my room. This time I woke up because I heard somebody tapping on the glass to my window. And when I went and I looked through the curtain, it was that spirit. It was outside. And it kept saying, let me in, let me in, let me in. And I said, no, check this out. And then it started hitting the window saying, I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. And I said, really? And he said, yes. And I said, it was the Bible, dude. And he said, what? Nah, -uh. that's a holy book. And I said, it was the Bible. I promise you it was the Bible. He said, no, I think you're wrong. And I said, okay, let's try something out here. Let me bring it back to you and keep it for a couple of weeks and see. He said, no, it's yours. <laughs> God said, it's yours. You keep it. And I said, that's okay. Cause it's in the landfill already. <laughs> if it's not good for you or if it's not good for me, it's not good for anyone, you know? So, so you, you might, you would never experience some things you would never expect, but that's, that's the way the enemy works. Yes, ma'am. I could have burned it. I could have burned it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> ah! Yeah, I could have burned it, but, um, I just, I, as soon as I heard the trash truck coming, I ran and got that sucker and I threw it. I, I didn't want to burn it in my barbecue pit anyway. I want to get some of those ashes in me later on, you know? <laughs> yeah, but no, I, you know, whenever you have something going on in your house and you're praying and you got, you ask people to pray and it doesn't lift, you brought something, you have something in your house that you brought with you. Okay. Don't look for obvious, ask the Holy Spirit to show you what it is and he will. Amen. All right. So we're going to take up an offering, but we'll let the people watching by live stream go first. If you want to support the ministry, uh, thank you very much. You can do that at smashingpillarsinternational.org. And um, yeah, so uh, let me just release God's blessing over you and uh, put your heads down, your hands up in the air and receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom. Now, Father, I pray that you would release angels to war over your people. Lord, I thank you that they take possession of every good and perfect thing that you have for them in this season of their life. For your glory and for your honor and for your praise in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen and amen. All right, that was the evil eye part two. So um, now you know that it is a, it can be an idiom or an expression for envy and jealousy, greed, or it could be, there could be something in the supernatural going on there too. It just depends. And, um, so, uh, I hope this message encouraged you and, and enlightened you. And, um, uh, thank you for, thank you for dropping by. I really appreciate, uh, the support and, um, yeah, share the message with other people. Yeah, yeah, do that. Okay, well, my prayer for you is that, that you would walk in the blessing of the Lord. Walk in the blessing of the Lord this week. 
and that you would that he would do something so amazing in your life within these next seven days that you wouldn't be able to help yourself but to be testifying of it that god would do something so great on your behalf that you would you would have to sing it from the rooftops and uh lord let it be let it happen lord i thank you for doing it the lord bless you and the lord keep you the lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom give you peace lord release the angels now lord release the angels lord to bring that blessing into their hands father for your glory in jesus name amen and amen all right my name is samuel you've been watching smashing pillars international and until next time shalom shalom